it have man? Oh dear, who marrying man? And the system working against the almighty plan. Well, listen, brothers and sisters, why they harassing the street fellas? Oh my gosh, they have the place in a mess. But the macho men say it's time to protest. This one-sided society is what destroying our country. What a pressure when we so far they should legislate this law. Stop the confusion. Man have to marry more than one woman. We want more wives. Wife. We need more wives. Wife. We want more wives so we could end this economic strife. We want more wives. Wife. We need more wives. Wives. We want more wives so children from different mothers could live nice. Let me be straight and very frank. Wife one handling issues by the bank. If number two is unavailable, number three have to put food on the table just in case she feeling sick and she cannot do it. No problem. Number four gonna give it to us for sure. We want more wife. We protesting. We want more wife. Why? Because this present system is what machine. When I tell them I'm going to sing this song My telephone start ringing all day long Though your wife know you singing this Keep out of me and my wife business Because when the popes, benedicts and them go off track And penetrate them little boys in church from the back I don't hear much about that at all. I find all your churches hypocritical. Saying, who can let them be? But I forgot the next woman, you want to kill me. Welcome to the Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, Andrew Dick. <laughs> Okie dokie, kids. What's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? Not a lot because most of our MPs are off island. I promise you that we was going to give you the latest um, of the IPCO um, situation, the IPCO um, conference that's happening in the Netherlands right now. Nine members of parliament are currently in the Netherlands, you know, working very hard. Um, and of course, uh, we have some highlights of the, the meeting. Uh, very interesting, very interesting stuff, I must say. First, we're going to start off with, uh, you know, the Curacao uh, delegation leader um, getting a, a, a question from the tallest member of parliament uh, as it concerns to paying back the Netherlands, um, how we should go about it, um, if, what's Curacao's stance on it. And um, he gave a very roaring speech, um, well, answer concerning it. And then, of course, um, we'll give you some more highlights of the IPCO um, conference. Take a look. What do you think the strategy should be in terms of handling these upcoming loans, as I'll also be presenting. We seem to all three be in a similar situation come October. What is the strategy? What is the discussion like with the government in terms of this is what we should stand for? This is where we draw the line in terms of the refinancing of these loans. Very easy. Very easy. You have to sit down on the table and talk and discuss and come to solution together. That's the only way out. We cannot fight. We cannot do anything else. We have to come with a solution. And that is sit on the table, look at the points of every country, 
to see the yes and no's and the good and the bad and seek out how we can together come to a solution. Otherwise, we all are going to fail. We have a Koninkrijk, but it's still four countries with four opinions, with four decisions, with four everything. We cannot come out if we stay and stand on our points without doing what we as, as uh, um, uh, uh, um, um, authority have to do. Self in wars, it's, it, it, can, it will be over when the people sit together and talk it and end the war. We have to do the same. There is no war in the Koninkrijk. So we have to sit on the table and come to solutions. That is my part. And I hope that all of the delegations, once and for all, sit together and come with a solution for the whole country, whole Koninkrijk. Thank you. Thank you. Make peace, not war. I think that was basically what you said. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, boy, I'm ready to move to Curacao. Why we can't have politicians like that here? In any case, um, now, the tallest member of parliament, Rolando Bryson, continues to go after Enya. I tell you, Ansari going to put out a hit on him. He's going to get in an accident. Something's going to happen. Or the Dutch is going to lock him up again because he continues to just poke the bear. And he's spoken two bears. He's spoken Enya and he's spoken the Dutch. The man was like Napoleon in front of uh, all, his, all of his enemies, and he was just like, are you is no good, but we can't pay you now. We're going to pay you later, but we're good for it. But we're happy that we're here. Kumbaya, um, pay us our restoration for slavery. <laughs> that's, that's basically, <laughs> in a nutshell, what the MP said. Uh, but of course, I'll, I'll let you hear it for yourself. Uh, this is the presentation by um, MP Bryson. Um, I take out the front part because most of the stuff we know already and um, got to, to the juicy stuff of the speech. Um, and I'm also answering questions. Take a look. With the CFT having issued a positive advice regarding the acquisition of loans for these capital investments, one would hope that it leads to a subscription by the Dutch government considering how much we can help improve the lives of our people in our country with these investments. Based on the economic bulletin of the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin of March 2023, it is being assumed that St. Martin will refinance the loans that mature in 2023 related to the liquidity support received from the Netherlands in 2020 and 2021. From the presentations before me, it is clear that Aruba and Curaçao are also in a similar position. From the, St. Martin from the St. Martin Parliament perspective, as per the debt cancellation motion of Parliament of St. Martin, talks must be had regarding debt cancellation and how we can work towards improving the country's infrastructure and sustainable development. Let us perhaps look at how another major organization within the region sees this issue, the CARICOM. From CARICOM's perspective, the CARICOM 10-point plan for reparatory justice sees debt cancellation as one of the steps that should be taken in any plans for attempted to remedy the damage done by slavery by those countries who have benefited from it. The CARICOM states, and I quote, Caribbean governments that emerged from slavery and colonialism have inherited massive crisis of community poverty and institutional unpreparedness for development. The pressure of development has driven governments to carry the burden of public employment and social policies designed to confront colonial legacies. This process has resulted in states ac accumulating unsustainable levels of public debt that now constitute their fiscal entrapment. Support for the payment of domestic debt and cancellation of international debt are necessary as part of reparatory actions." End quote. I hope these are discussions we can have in the coming days as well. In previous presentations, on behalf of the Parliament of St. Martin, 
we had presented the issue of conditions being added to the refinancing of loans, especially those given on the basis of mutual assistance, so hurricanes, COVID-19. Recently in the media, there were statements made by the State Secretary Van Huffelen that a condition for the refinancing of loans related to COVID-19 could now be that the countries of Curaçao and St. Martin would have to, quote, come up with a solution for the situation regarding any policyholders who have been put at risk due to what the courts have determined as various improprieties conducted by the management and in particular the owner of this private insurance company. This company, as with every insurance company, was to be supervised by the independent institution that is the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin, so not the government directly. As mentioned earlier, the government of St. Martin has already indicated that refinancing of these loans is crucial to the short and long-term viability of the country. This begs the question, what does refinancing of loans granted on the basis of mutual assistance as per the Kingdom Charter have to do with the conduct of management and owners of a private insurance company supervised by an independent institution? While it is imperative that any policyholders should be made whole, one could question whether the financial future of St. Martin should now be put at risk with our, own, with our own, own kingdom partner, the Netherlands, stating that, to paraphrase, you must come up with a solution or else. Perhaps this sort of issue of conditionality on loans will form a part of the discussions this week regarding democratic deficit, as this ties to a deficit we have in we have as countries in terms of contracting loans, where the Netherlands is in practice the main source St. Martin has for the refinancing of loans. As it regards legislation, the Parliament of St. Martin will handle the National Ordinance on Higher Education and the National Ordinance on Financial Accounts 2021 in short. As it concerns the financial accounts for 2021, this shows that there are improvements on many fronts, including that of financial management. Just before coming to IPCO, the Parliament adjourned the start of a discussion within the Committee of Finance on tax systems improvements presented by the Minister of Finance in February. Lastly, St. Martin requested that banking and financial services be discussed at an IPCO level. However, we understand that this was not possible. However, allow me the opportunity to explain the current situation. Based on financial inclusion survey of the Central Bank of Curaçao and St. Martin, we currently have 17% of people in St. Martin who do not have access to a bank account. As was discussed with the Central Bank, that figure might be higher when one takes into account undocumented people. To this end, the Parliament of St. Martin on January 24, 2022, approved a motion that resolved to have the Minister of Finance vet proposed legislation for enshrining the right of a bank account in law, among other improvements to financial services to the consumer. The government has informed us that they have approved the draft national ordinance basic bank account that is in the legislative process right now. This draft aims to improve consumer access to digital payment services and a number of basic financial services. Parliament awaits the receipt of this draft for further handling. This then brings me to the end of the presentation. If there are any questions, as always, I'm happy to answer. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you all a pleasant, fruitful remainder of this IPCO. Thank you, Mr. Bryson, for your clear and comprehensive presentation. You already invited the audience for questions. I'm looking around whether anybody is going to make use of that opportunity. I don't see one. Apparently, it was Crystal extremely clear, clear extremely <laughs> clear. But perhaps, you know, during the informal sessions and during dinner, they will um, come with questions oh, after all. Mr. Osepa. Thank you, Mr. President. It's about what you have given me about Enya and all the problems around it. And we know that a large family problem is from Curaçao and St. Maarten. I don't know in how far je zou kunnen aangeven of vanuit St. Maarten een bepaalde bereidheid is om dat, zou zeggen, gezamenlijk op te lossen met Curaçao en dan in die zin van hoe je tegenaan kijkt of het in die zin van uh, doorstart is of uh, opheffen. Heb je, heb je mm -hmm. een bepaald uh, beeld daarover? Dank je. 
Yes, we just before coming to Parliament uh, to IPCO, we like I mentioned, we had a meeting with the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank of Curacao in Saint Martin, where I actually posed that question. There's, from what I, I gather, there's definitely more than enough willingness on behalf of the government, in particular the Minister of Finance and the Central Bank, to come to a solution. What I highlight in my presentation is that why do does this sort of, for lack of a better term, threat has to be put on the government that is already in that process, has already been investigating this, has already been discussing with Curacao proposed solutions, and messing with the loan or the debt is certainly not going to help the government help Enya. So this is where um, I think it's important, like I mentioned in my speech, absolutely this requires attention, but I don't think that we need to hang these loans and what I hear from Aruba and Curacao, this kind of conditionality that keeps floating after us every year, another loan matures, another condition is added, now it's something related to a private company. How much further is this going to go? So I do believe absolutely it needs both our countries' absolute attention. What I think we have to be careful with is whether conditions are being added to loans based on these solutions. Yeah? Thank you. You have another question, however. Oh, yeah. oh. Please go ahead. From one of your direct colleagues. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. He questions me more at IPCO than in, in St. Martin. <laughs> Thank you very much and good afternoon to everyone. Concerning the situation with Enia, it seems to be the topic that we are sticking on. But can you elaborate a bit more concerning the judgment that was placed on the owner of the financial institution, the one point something billion that he is ordered to pay. And why must, again, that you made mention the islands of Aruba and not Aruba, the islands of Kyrgyzstan and Samatan be responsible in any form of way having to do any sort of refinancing or any discussion with the state secretary of the Dutch government in refinancing this loan when there was a institution in particular responsible for the oversight? Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry, before you answer, this is my mistake, but I would, didn't entire, you know, I didn't acknowledge the fact that he, uh, this is your own delegation member. Yes. So it's a bit of a weird situation. Um, um, he asked and, the question last time as well. Yeah, yeah, but given, given the time, I would okay, suggest no that we move on to the next sure. presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks again for your presentation. All righty then. Mouthful, right? I know. Take it in. Take it in. That's your representation right there in the Netherlands. Um, you know, um, um, MP Akim Arinel and Chanel Brownbell also gave a, a, a presentation, but we can't seem to find the footage. I don't know, it's at last. They gave a good presentation. Um, I think they were talking about um, how to be in parliament and say nothing at all. Yeah, it was a, it was a big hit. Welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you. Um, of course, don't forget, there is uh, some events happening this weekend. Saturday is all about um, the ladies' night at Bamboo House. And of course, um, Miss Idelin here in Wien will, will be having an event um, that is going to be nice. Oh, dancing and, 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 and a lot of some other stuff. Um, it's going to be nice. Is this, week this weekend, right? This weekend? Yeah, this weekend, next weekend, this weekend. Anyway, watch that. All right. You Deserve It Foundation presents Celebration Dia de Bandera de Corsal All in Black Affair on July 2nd at the Port of St. Martin. For the first time in St. Martin, icons, gents, Tusink, and also featuring Control Band. And of course, we're going to have a mystery guest. Tickets are available from Van Dorp, Robbie's Lottery in town, and Judy's Bar. For VIP singles and VIP tables, please call 553-7626 or 586-4347. Doors will open at 8 p.m. See you there on the 2nd of July, 2023. At SXM, we're taking travel and tourism to new heights. Here we boast spacious check-in areas. 10 passport control points, comfortable departure lounges, and finally, there's an airport in the Caribbean that takes your travel plans as seriously as you do. Princess Juliana, 
International Airport.